choice of dress for um, a royal wedding shows in a really interesting way changing attitudes to royal marriage in itself. Going back through history, it was a matter of foreign policy. These marriages anchored political alliances and diplomatic settlements. And in that way, the, the wedding dress could so often um, reflect just the importance um, of that, that transaction um, for the nation. The dresses are gold and silver. They, they represent money, they represent wealth, they're showing off dresses. We can still see that in, in Princess Charlotte's dress here. What's really interesting is if you compare Charlotte's little silver dress with the dress worn by her younger cousin, Queen Victoria. Victoria is already queen when she is married and she realises as a clever young woman that marriage has been used as, as a political tool um, so often. And she didn't want that to be a factor on her wedding day. You can see that reflected in her diary where there's a little note. They talked about my wearing my robes. That means the big red velvet coronation robes trimmed with ermine. But I thought not. Um, she was very clear, this is a personal transaction. And she designs a dress which steps over that mark into the kind of wedding dress that any well brought up young girl in this country could begin to aspire to. And so royal weddings begin to be that kind of aspirational thing. Royal wedding dresses have always been message givers. All royal brides have looked to the gifts that their generation, their era can provide for them. Even the simplest of the dresses that are here is absolutely replete with message. Um, first of all, it's made out of an English silk. It was woven in Spitalfields in East London. It's decorated with English lace, and that was a special commission. It was a well-publicised commission um, um, from the towns of Honiton and Beer in the West Country. So Victoria, on her wedding day, was actually shouting loud about things that Britain was really good at. And this was a tradition then followed by Victoria's successors. Um, Alexandra's dress um, was also um, decorated with English lace. In fact, she had come from Denmark um, with the present of a dress which had been made out of Brussels lace. But that was not going to be the thing. It was really important, again, that this was a British dress. And the same goes with um, the dress which was worn by Princess May, later Queen Mary. There are wonderful images of um, May and her mother sitting there with manufacturers from all over the British Isles coming with their products and they're making a very careful and very diplomatic um, selection just so that it can be seen um, that as a royal bride and indeed uh, um, potentially a future queen is that she has done this very, very well and fairly. The 20th century dresses show just how important it was to get the message right. Um, there had been two world wars by the time Princess Elizabeth married her prince, um, Prince Philip of Greece. It was a desperately austere time in British history and many of the options that had been available to Princess Elizabeth's predecessors just weren't there. Um, Princess Elizabeth and her dress designer, Norman Hartnell, in fact took a very different um, inspiration for their dress. Norman Hartnell found uh, uh, the painting by Botticelli of Primavera and for him and for the princess that was a far more powerful and important um, story to be telling. This was going to be a dress which actually signalled um, rejuvenation. It was a dress which was a sign for better things to come. If you were Princess Elizabeth's little sister, Princess Margaret, you could actually be far more imaginative. You could follow fashion. Your dress didn't have to have that political message, that, that, that weight. Princess Elizabeth's dress was 
designed by Norman Hartnell. Norman Hartnell also designed the dress for her sister, Princess Margaret. It was John Kavanagh, another young and very um, skillful couturier who comes to design the dresses worn by Princess Alexandra of Kent and Catherine Worsley, who marries the Duke of Kent um, in the 1960s. And then, of course, this moves into present times and we have David and Elizabeth Emanuel for Diana, Princess of Wales, um, and, and, and so on. But it's not until the 1930s that we begin to see the royal family here patronising these stellar figures within the fashion world. The rise of the mass media has an enormous impact. The, the dresses have had to kind of grow as the, as the media expectation has grown. Um, Television cameras in Westminster Abbey have meant that those dresses are going to have to live up to those venues and indeed be of a, of a sort of design excellence to bear um, infinite scrutiny to. Um, the dresses are, are big, the dresses are showy, um, the dresses still have their important message um, giving um, to make and this is something that then has been celebrated, it is talked about, it is debated, it is the stuff of our newspapers, um, it's the stuff of our newspapers today.